Hello, and welcome back to the Polyglot Bookshelf, where I talk about books in various languages. Today's book that I want to talk about is Venenos de Dus Hemegios do Diabo, or Poisons of God, Remedies of the Devil, by author Mia Cotto. Okay, first, some background. Mia Cotto is a Mozambique author. He rose to prominence during the period right after the revolution that happened here in Portugal, the Revolução do Escravos, and the end of the colonial wars in which Mozambique and Angola both got their independence from Portugal. And after that, in Mozambique, there was a long protracted civil war. During the civil war, Antonio Emilia Lecce Cote became well known as a journalist, and in fact, he wrote a couple of non fiction books about the war. After this time period, he began to write literature under his childhood name, Mia Cotto, and he became very well known and received a number of literary awards. Mia Cotto today as actually a professor of ecology in Mozambique and a staunch defender of the environment. As for the story, Venenos de Dus Hemegios do Diabo tells the story of a young Portuguese doctor named Sidonia Rosa. Sidonia Rosa is in love with a Mozambique mixed-raced girl named Diolinda, who was in medical school with him. However, after medical school, she returned to Africa and promptly disappeared. He has now followed her to Africa and has ended up in the village of Villa Kakimba, taking care of her father. Deolinda's parents, Munda and Bartholomew, are primary characters in the book. They know that he is looking for Deolinda, and they use him rather ruthlessly for free health care, for money, and for other things. At the same time, he's using them to get information about Diolinda, and they have a somewhat twisted relationship. This is particularly true with the doctor and Bartholomew, who have a very kind of sarcastic back and forth that can be humorous at times, and at times can be show kind of their true feelings. Now, Bartholomew is housebound with diabetes and heart disease. And at times, he, in his depression, he just wants to die. And he will ask the doctor to give him some medicine to just end it all. And he will hint that having guilt over some past actions. At other times, he's basically paranoid and thinks that his wife wants him dead. And indeed, she says that she wants him dead. Again, they have at times a very sarcastic back and forth that might be wit, or there's a little bit of seriousness there too, especially since at times the wife asks the doctor for some medicine to just get rid of her husband but she's afraid of what the local community will think and do if, she, if something untoward happens to him. Now, Bartholomew also has a long-standing feud with a local government administrator. And the first part of this feud comes out pretty early in the book. Years ago, a diesel ship broke down in the harbor near the village. Their mechanic was sick, and no one on board knew how to fix the motor. Bartholomew's father helps fix the motor, and that night, both Bartholomew and the administrator, then teenagers, row out to the boat. They both beg to be taken on as part of the crew. Bartholomew's argument is that he knows about motors and they don't dare go off to sea without somebody on board who can fix the motor if something goes wrong again. The captain accepts that motive and takes Bartholomew in the crew. The administrator, however, is sent home. This leads to Bartholomew having a career as the only black sailor on a Portuguese ship. 
at a time when black men had few rights and few opportunities. He shows a great deal of pride in this, as he should, and he insists that the administrator is just jealous of him. Eventually, however, another dark secret comes out about him and the administrator and about Diolinda. Each of the characters gives their own unreliable account of this, and we as the reader are left to construct the truth. So the men in their youth had fought over Munda. After Bartholomew and Munda got together and Munda's beauty began to fade, they turned their attentions to Diolinda. Munda attempts to soften this somewhat by admitting that Diolinda is not her daughter, but in fact her younger sister. But really it doesn't do much because Diolinda is definitely young and definitely vulnerable and is abused by both of these men. She eventually escapes for a time to Portugal, where she meets and is with Sidonia. But as soon as she returns to Mozambique, the, problem, the abuse starts again and she finds herself stuck in the same situation. She leaves the village in one account, she's pregnant and wants an abortion. In another, she has a chronic disease. They never name the disease, but given the time period, it's quite likely AIDS. At any rate, whether it's a um, bad abortion or HIV, she ends up dying, and she's been buried in the cemetery, local cemetery, the whole time. Why wasn't he told this from the beginning? According to Munda, lies and forgetting are the only remedy the living have. But unfortunately for this family, it's not a, it's a temporary remedy and the truth eventually comes out. The book is of moderate difficulty. I would not recommend it as your first book in Portuguese because it does require a fairly strong foundation but neither the structure or language is especially difficult. I picked it up shortly after arriving in Portugal, and I was taking B1 Conversational Portuguese at the same time I read it, and I managed it with just you know, very few problems. Like most foreign language books that I found, it's the first couple chapters that are the hardest. Every author has their own style of writing and the own, their own set of words that they like to use, and there will always be a few things that will be hard for you to understand or, or words you don't know. But after a couple of chapters, you get used to the language that that author likes, and it gets easier. So when you pick up a new book in another language, stick with it for a little while. So why do I put this on my polyglot bookshelf? Well, if you search for Mia Koto in English, Publisher World lists four English language books for him. If you look on wook.pt, you will see that in Portuguese they list more than 50 books. So definitely he is underrepresented outside of the Portuguese language, if not completely unknown. And so it definitely meets that first criteria for being on, on this bookshelf. As far as this book specifically, if it's been translated into English, I can't find it. If you know, put a thing in the comments. I'd love to find out. Um, so my second criteria for the Polyglot bookshelf, of course, is that books that are worth reading in their original language, regardless of their availability in other languages. And I think Miyakota makes that list as well. There are many times while reading this book that I stopped and reread sentences because they were just that good. And they really made me think. Some of those lines would translate well, but others depend heavily on his understanding and use of Portuguese. Um, good example is the dry wit between the doctor and Bartholomew. Some of it comes across regardless of the language, but there are lines that would they wouldn't land with the same punch if you translated them. For example, 
Bartholomew at one point leaves his house for the first time in years, and Mundo can't find where he is, so she sends the doctor to search for him. He's making his way through the market, and he can track Bartholomew's progress by asking market goers, and they don't know who this guy is, but just the answers that he gave them are more than enough to tell that it's Bartholomew. He tells them, one of them asks where Bartholomew lives, and he says, now vivo, so moro. The joke here hinges on the difference between viver, which means to live as in be alive, and morar, to live as in your address. And of course, I just translated that so it can be translated, but the joke kind of loses its punch when you have to explain it. So in Portuguese, it, it, it cracked me up because, yeah, it kind of sums up his personality. So there are reasons that it's better in Portuguese, even if it could be translated. So that's my book for today. Give a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to find out what the next book is. And I will see you next time. Ciao, ciao.